One of the best ways to filter a pond is using a bog filter. I find with a bog filter I can achieve clean, clear, healthy water every time. That is, provided the bog filter is sized correctly to the pond's usage and the inhabitants. But what if the pond is massive? I'm talking about large, unlined mini lakes. This is a question I get asked a lot. How do I implement a bog filter on my five acre pond or however many acres it is? Technically you could do it, but golly gosh, it would be expensive and it wouldn't be something that I would personally do. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the types of filtration that I would use if I wanted to improve the water clarity and quality in a large unlined pond or dam. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and visit my website, ozponds.com. A bog filter is a really effective filter because it uses two things that nature has been using for probably millions of years to filter water, plants and bacteria. In ponds that are struggling with water clarity and quality issues, nutrients is often the main culprit. Those nutrients that are causing problems are generally phosphates and nitrogen. The cool thing about plants and bacteria is that they can help us process both. When we construct a bog filter, we use rock and pebble to create surface area for bacteria to colonize, and we then add plants into the pebble to further help reduce nutrient levels. The water is pumped into the base of the bog, and it's forced to move through the pebble and the plant roots before returning to the pond. This is an incredibly powerful filtration method for a backyard fish pond, and if you size it correctly, it's incredibly easy to maintain the pond it pretty much looks after itself. I've got a bunch of videos and articles on my website, along with a handy PDF that contains all the formulas I use when I build a backyard pond, if that's something you're interested in. But on a really large pond, we don't wanna buy massive pumps and create a massive bog or wetland, which would be required if we were going to filter the water in the same manner. Instead, we should look to easier ways that we can increase the surface area for the bacteria and add more plants. The best plants for filtering the water are riparian or marginal plants. These are plants that are found in shallow waters or plants that will have their roots in the water, but their foliage above the water. We also want to encourage diversity. We don't want to rely on one or two plant species as we want things that are active at different times of the year. I recently made a video on this topic, so I'll link that in the description. So it's a great start if we add in lots of plants into the margins of the ponds, but sometimes that might not be enough. All filtering is matching the amount of filtering ability with the amount of nutrients. If water quality doesn't improve, you need more filtering capability. So if I had a pond that was natural and already had plenty of marginal plants, that was struggling with water issues, there's a few options. Number one would be to try and reduce the amount of nutrient inside the pond. That could be that there are too many fish, turtles, or whatever. It could also be the quality of the water entering the pond. If you have paddocks or fields around the pond or fertilizer-rich runoffs entering the pond, that's gonna to lead to algae blooms and overall quality issues. Fast moving water picks up all kinds of byproducts, and it's not really pure water anymore that's entering the pond. If we can slow that water down and move it through obstacles, allowing it to percolate into the ground, it will be pre-filtered. Some sediments will be removed and the water itself will be purified by bacteria and organisms in the soil and also by plants. The second thing I'd do is increase the filtration. There's all kinds of nifty designs for floating islands or wetlands, and that's what I'd use. Basically, all we need to do is create a structure that can float and support the weight of marginal plants. These are going to filter the water in exactly the same way that a bog filter does. The plants are floating around with their roots dangling in the water, consuming nutrients directly from the water column. The root system of the plants dangling into the water are going to increase the surface area that bacteria can colonize. 
And because the islands drift around the pond, depending on the wind, you don't need to actively pump the pond's volume through them like you would in a backyard bog filter. Of course, if you wanted to, you could use solar power pumps to dump water onto the surface of the floating wetland and it could percolate back down into the pond. This would help increase the amount of water that comes into contact with the plants and the bacteria. You might be wondering, well, why not just use floating plants like duckweed, water lettuce or something similar? And you could, but remember we want diversity. The floating islands allow us to plant any manner of marginal plants that can handle having its roots submerged. Anyway, that's just the path that I would go down if I was trying to filter a large body of water that was having quality and clarity issues. I'd also probably add an aeration device because well oxygenated water will allow the bacteria to operate much more effectively. I've done a few different videos on aeration, so I'll throw them down in the description as well. Anyway, I hope this video has given you a few avenues to explore to help with your pond. Every pond is a little bit different, and often you'll utilize multiple methods of filtration to achieve your desired results. Hopefully it was helpful, and if it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.